Hi, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile in Boulder, Colorado. I'm going to be installing the um, shower line PVC drain in this application. Um, my floor joists are running this way, and I have a half inch subfloor. Had I had a three quarter inch subfloor, I probably would have put the drain by the back wall. Half inch subfloor, I'm going to have to put some reinforcing in between the floor joists before I put my backer down. I have the old drain stub here that I'm going to have to move over. Um, I already, in, in applications like this, the shower mixer and shower head used to be over here. I like to move it over to the other side. With a single pane of glass and a walk-in shower, you can turn the water on without getting yourself wet. So I need to run all of my plumbing over to this side to connect and I need to cut this off and move my P-trap and everything over to where the drain is going to be. So I've chalked a line on the floor, which is going to be my outside edge of the drain. I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a pretty substantial hole here. I have a floor joist here. I won't go back any further than that. Um, that will allow me to put some blocking in between these joists and also from here across to hold the drain firm. So I've run all of my new plumbing, my supply lines over to the other side, my shower head supply. I have a rubber connector here to the copper that will also go to here. I have my blocking in place and I left it big enough that I can get this, all of this down there. You also need to notch out your blocking to accommodate this extra space of the PVC, of, of the PVC drain. You've got maybe a half inch here, which typically works with a three quarter inch subfloor and a quarter inch backer board going on top of it. But when you get in here, there's not enough and you need to just simply notch those out. You want to be sure that when this is all in place, hooked up, that you're number one square to your back wall, that you're level this way, which when the backer board goes underneath this, that will help. Also helpful to remember and locate where these are for when you go ahead and screw the drain down. Um, you're going to want to be able to screw into this. I've got a half inch here. Like I said, if it was three quarters of an inch, it wouldn't be too bad. But notch those out so this fits. I've got the coupling. Make sure you have a little bit of wiggle room once you've made your connection because you are going to slip your backer board underneath here and underneath the front edge. There's going to be radiant floor in the rest of this bathroom. Um, I'm still going to run my hardy backer out to about here so that I've got a nice solid surface. I'll butt my radiant up to that and run my wires around. So I'm ready to make this connection. Next is going to be the go board that goes up the walls, then the slope, then all the waterproofing. So I have the quarter inch backer board in place. Um, I set it with thin set and a quarter by quarter inch trowel. I have my drain screwed into place. If you run your finger along this green taped edge, you'll find the indentations where the screws go and they fit flush. Um, now I'm going to be putting the backer board along the walls. So I have my backer on the walls um, and I'm using the Johns Manville Go Board. If you're not familiar with it, it is absolutely the greatest product. You can carry five sheets at a time. It's 100% waterproof. It's a high density foam interior with a waterproof coating on the back. It is truly a score and snap product. It's light, it's easy. Um, <clears throat> they also sell a caulk, a sealant that goes with it. And you put a little dab, boom, 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 boom on all of your nail or screw holes and hit it with a knife and you're done. It's waterproof. Same in the corners, put a bead. They recommend when you stack boards and wherever you have a seam, you leave an eighth of an inch to fill. Um, they like you to put the bead on top of the sheet before you place the other one. 
<clears throat> Either way, as long as you're leaving a little bit of a gap so you have some room for the sealant to go in. It is so fast and if you're looking for a waterproof, absolutely waterproof shower, this is definitely the way to go. Um, I'm ready for my slope down here now, which I'm going to pre-cut and put down with um, thin set again, quarter inch by quarter inch trowel. So I'm ready to start my waterproofing. Um, Quick Drain USA sells a kit for liquid waterproofing, which is inside corners. These are for their membrane kit. Um, I, they sent me the wrong kit by mistake, but I can still use these for my inside corners. I have some of this fiber drywall tape. Their fiber tape is just a little bit wider. You're going to remove the clamping collar. You're going to remove the outside piece of the green and you can smooge and, and make a real mess with your waterproofing because you're not going to open up the inside to the drain till later. On the ends here are some locating pins which go into these slots and be careful when you put your tape when you're running your tape over from your membrane to here um, you're going to want to be careful if you are putting tape over those make sure you push those pins down hard and pull them through your tape but I'm probably just going to I'll be going up to here I don't need to tape any more than that um, I'll be putting my tape on an angle and installing it to the go board on the sides um, I typically I put the aqua defense down put the tape on go over it again with your roller and I like using a foam roller for this and I keep the foam roller in the bucket and it stays soft all the time I'm not buying new ones all the time and then same way with your inside corners um, I'm also going to tape to here to give myself waterproofing that's coming out to my tile. So that's the first coat of waterproofing. You'll put a second coat on and that will be all that you'll need to do. It's important to make sure you don't have any lumps or darts in your tape as you go around. If you do on your second lap you can always throw a little bit more underneath there. The other trick if you have a, a, a pucker is to just cut it and then overlap your tape on top of that cut. Works very nicely. Um, the other thing to remember is this stuff dries, the Aqua Defense dries very hard. And if you've got a lump in your wall someplace, you'll be hard pressed to get it off. It dries hard and um, it's tough scraping. So there's that. Until it dries, I'm going to call it a day and um, put a second coat on. If you were doing this, if you were in a hurry, you could put a fan on this. It would dry in probably an hour and a half. You could put the second coat on, put a fan on it, and you're ready for tile. You're ready to go. So I wanted to show with this go board that you can build your cubbies also with just minimal framing in here. Pieces go together. I'll put a couple of tacks in there. I'll hit it all around the edges with their um, go board sealant. It's going to be completely waterproof. You can glue pieces in, in fact. They don't have to be screwed into framing, or the framing can just be minimal. The stuff is structural enough that it's going to hold whatever it is that you're doing. 100% waterproof. You don't have to water, worry about waterproofing, taping all of the corners because you'll put the go board sealant in the corners. You can also glue go board <coughs> to go board with their sealant and it'll be as strong as putting nails or screws through it. Screws will sometimes help hold it in place until the stuff kicks. But uh, it's really such a great product. So waterproofing with the go board looks something like this. They want you to leave an eighth of an inch between the boards so that you have room to put the sealant. You can put the sealant on your bottom board. Go ahead and drop your board down on it till it squishes. I find it doesn't give me enough time sometimes to do it. 
I use spacers, my tile spacers, in between these when I do them, but um, this is acceptable also. The idea is that you're going to put a bead in your bead. like that. Nail holes. You can do it just like drywall. Boom. Same in the corners. I'd like you to have a one inch, a one inch overlap of all of your stuff. Um, this is just a run. I'm just going to show you. I'll finish all of this off. Um, but it's so simple and so easy. There's no more taping with thin set coming back with your liquid waterproofing. Two coats. You can do all of this in an hour. You're ready for tile. I should also mention. Um, a shower this size, this is a 4 foot by 32 inch shower. A shower this size takes two tubes of the glue. Depending on how much you have, of course, is how many tubes. I was lucky I had another tube of a different product out in the car, um, but I ran out on this. So I'm ready for tile now. Um, I've reinstalled the clamping bar with the screws that are provided in the small white box. These are your extensions, your drain extensions. There's a small tab here that's going to line up exactly to the clamping collar so that your other bar, your other strip, which acts as your schluter that your tile butts up to, can go along this also. Um, these are trimmable with a pair of snips. It's not too hard if you've got a good pair. Also, this number 57 modified urethane sealant is what they recommend. Um, they carry this at quick drain. I think that the sealant that's used on the go board is the same type of stuff. I'm going to put a generous amount underneath to keep water from going underneath it. I'm going to put some on both sides as well and that will be that will keep my water integrity um, and then it goes in with the screws that came in the end of the clamping collar these are the screws that go these are the screws that go in there the big headed round headed ones and the small ones go into the clamping collar so the last piece is the movable piece that goes on the top here. This acts as the where your tile is going to butt up to. You can get it started and just move it right along the clamping collar. What I like to do is leave it proud, set my tile, and then tap it down to its correct position to wherever your tile is going to be. But this is the last piece of all of this. Once this is installed and pushed down all the way, um, I'm ready for tile. If you do push it down too far, you can get a screwdriver underneath it to raise it back up again. So to back up a little bit, when I'm cutting my last, or my first row of tile here, I like to leave a little bit of a tab of the tile to come down to that drain extension. It just gives you a little bit something, a little more to caulk around and it doesn't leave a hole. It's a cleaner finish when you put the cover on to know that it's butting up against tile as opposed to getting lazy and cutting it straight across. Um, I removed the green protective um, film that was on here. Just took a box knife, cut all the way around, cut it to my extensions. I have removed that. These are the little spacers that come with the drain. This presses onto these tabs and they're adjustable. They sit on this shoulder. 
because they're slotted, it allows you to move your drain back, or for, back and forth. They also give you the little spacers that fit in here. These are all PVC, and I recommend that once you have, have established your height and you've put the whole drain in and make sure it's right, that you put a little dab of PVC glue on there and glue these. Um, just in my working here, these are a devil to get on. You get it on, you pull the drain off, one falls off, the spacers are going down the drain, you're fishing them out of the P-trap, it's a mess. Um, also, you're going to want to take a close look at your drain and make sure that it's straight. I had to move and bend and finagle this one a little bit so that there's not a bow in the top. And so I'm going to glue all of my little spacers on these guys, press them into place on here, and install a drain cover. So again, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile, Boulder, Colorado. This is what the finished shower looks like with the linear drain. I like to put the um, shower mixer over here with the shower head on the other side so you don't have to get wet when you come in. There will be a single pane of glass that's going to come to here so it's just a walk-in entry. There may be a little bit of splashing. It's all splashing on the same tile that's in here. It should not be a big deal. We had a furnace vent that came through the center of this wall that forced us to put the shower head off to the side but we were able to get a nice deep cubby, cubby over here. Um, if you're interested in a linear drain, if you're interested in installation, give me a call. Um, my phone number is at my website, antaristile.com, and um, sure beats having a shower pan. Easier installation as well.